Greetings CCF friends, CCF family, and to all who are watching. We want to extend an invitation to you for our first virtual mission trip of the year through Sumatra, Indonesia on April 17th at 11 a.m. Manila time. My name is Kyle and I work with CCF Beyond through our international missionary partners. This is what we do beyond the Philippines in order to initiate church planting movements in the least reached places. One of those places that we partner in is Indonesia. And let me tell you a few things about Indonesia that you might not know. Indonesia is the fourth most populous nation in the world with over 274 million people. And of those 274 million people, they're dispersed among over 17,500 islands, making Indonesia the largest island nation in the world. With over 224 million Indonesians who claim that they are Muslims and that they follow Islam. Over 83% of the entire population of Indonesia is Muslim. So if you want to know more and you want to join us to explore the work we're doing in Sumatra, Indonesia, then join us via Zoom April 17th at 11 a.m. Manila time. We ask that during this time you take care, that you stay healthy. God bless.
Good afternoon, CCF family. Welcome to Weekly Prayer Intercede. My name is John Salalima, and I will be your host this afternoon. Thank you for joining us again through Zoom, Facebook, and, and YouTube. It is truly a joy to come together as one family and offer up our prayers to the Lord. We would like to request every one of you to dedicate this time to the Lord. Remove any distraction, listen to God's prompting, and focus on what the Lord is telling us to do based on his words. So as we normally do, we would like to begin our time together with thanksgiving. So kindly share in your chat box any praise report or blessings that the Lord has given us for the past week. What are some of the answered prayers? he has given us. Please feel free to share it in the chat box so we can encourage one another on how the Lord is working in our lives. I'll give you time, uh, some time to, to, to share. Okay? While, while waiting uh, as you share your, your praise report in the chat box, let me share how the Lord is moving in my life. My wife and I were in isolation for the past two weeks, but by God's grace, our, the results turned out to be negative from COVID. But the fear and anxieties we went through in our family were so real. And I praise and thank God that we are part of the group where everyone prays for us, calls us to show their care, and even brought food and medicine to our house. I personally witnessed the joy being part of the group. And I pray that all of you here will be part of the group that we will encourage and strengthen you during this time of pandemic. So we, we already have a lot of prayer, uh, <laughs> our answered prayer for in our chat from Joyce uh, Amoni, provision, okay, from Pastor Wilson, praise God, still healthy, alive, and kicking, praise God for that, Pastor Wilson, for Oscar Loreto, response to my job applications, okay, uh, for, for, well, my one of my D group members, praise God that we are safe from COVID-19, from Brother Sani Kaayaw, okay, from, from Marivik Pila, okay, good health, favor, and provision. Really praise God. No, it, God is really amazing. He hears and answers our prayer. For Maria Rosanna, praise God for Go Viral, yes, and Big South Ministry. Help, if, of course, in my spiritual group. We praise God for the ministries that God is, is doing in CCF as we minister for you. Okay, for JP, my brother's family are now negative from COVID. Praise God. He is indeed our healer, our Jehovah Rapha. Okay, for, uh, for Pastor Joseph, good help by God's grace. Praise God for that. And our last one, okay, for Ed Flanco, praise the Lord because my tatai and my two nephews are now negative from COVID after 14 days of quarantine. We really praise God for that. Really praise God. So I, I'm so blessed. There are a lot of uh, uh, prayer, answered prayer in the chat groups. And, and, and I really so blessed and encouraged on how the Lord answers our prayer. For me, it validates that prayer is the key that opens the heart of God. And this is said in, in, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. As we continue and enjoy our prayer time together, I want you to meditate on the lyrics of our praise and worship song and have this as your prayer to the Lord. Let's now hear and sing from our hearts this worship song. As we start this time of prayer, let us sing this song of surrender to our God. All 
our hearts, our prayer, that we offer our life to the Lord and all our struggles, all our defeats, and all our victories. May the Lord use it for Christ's glory alone. And now to open us with a word of prayer, may we call on Pastor Joseph. Let us join our hearts in prayer as we prepare our hearts to really collectively uh, Pray to the Lord. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace and mercy, praising you for who you are, our great, awesome, magnificent God, who is compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness, and eternally sovereign God. Our God, who is the creator of all things, the source of all things, and the owner of all things, our omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent God, our Yahweh Rapha. Our God who knows all our concerns, our struggles, our heavy burdens, and our anxieties. Thank you for reminding us in your word, O oh Lord, that when we are weighed down by all this, you said, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is comfortable and my burden is light. We come before you, our Father, today with heavy hearts because many of our loved ones, friends, and even our dear brothers and sisters in CCF are infected by this COVID-19 virus. Two of our dear pastors are in the hospital. A dear sister of ours you have called home. Many of our campus missionaries and their families are infected, so with our CCF staff, volunteers, and agency workers. Oh God, we pray for your miraculous divine intervention in their healing and provisions in the name of Jesus. May you continue to strengthen and comfort those who lost loved ones. We pray you will minister to us at every level and need today. Father, there are many other concerns we will leave up to you today, Father, including those of our dear CCF brothers and sisters abroad 
who lost a loved one in a vehicular accident and others are still in the hospital and many others who are sick. We pray for our government leaders that you will give them your wisdom and direction as they continue to lead us in carefully navigating through this pandemic. May you continually remind us to be very careful to stay healthy and safe during this time. Father, may you use our devotion today through our Pastor Vic Kisumbing to refresh us and remind us all of our sure hope and assurance in you and that you are always true to your promises in your time for our good and for your glory. We pray we will be more proactive in managing our priorities well in this very trying and challenging time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Joseph, for that prayer. Now let me remind you, as we normally do, please share your prayer requests through the chat box after the devotion so that we can really focus uh, on, on listening to God's word. Now let's now hear God's word with one of the most loved pastor in CCF, Pastor Vicky Sumbing. Greetings, my dear brothers and sisters. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is a privilege to be able to share with you this Friday, Intercede Weekly. Amazing how we gather together to pray. My devotion today is influenced by last Sunday's message. Again, let us remind ourselves that the message last Sunday is make the most of your time. Make the most of your time, a relevant message for us all. And I know we have all been blessed by that. This day, we are going to listen to what God has to say to us on make time, every moment counts. Make time, every moment counts. Psalm 90 verse 12 tells us each of our days we must learn to teach us to number so that we may grow in wisdom. Teach us to number each of our days so that we may grow in wisdom. Again, may I remind everybody, it tells us to number each, meaning every day of our days so that we may grow in wisdom. Let me ask you, do you get into situations when you Tell yourself you will find time. What does that really mean? Isn't that telling yourself it's not really that urgent? It's not that important? When you tell yourself or somebody you will make time, what does that mean? What does that mean? It purely says to all of us that that person is important. So finding time versus making time should always be understood in that context. Making time is giving importance to somebody. So that is our awareness today. Psalm 39 verses 4 to 5 reminds us, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, each of us is a breath. So remind ourselves that our time here on earth is going to be short. For some of us, maybe 50, for some 60, for some 70. And for many I know who are my friends, my brothers, who are now in their 80s and they're still around praising the Lord, giving time to minister to each and everyone that they're able to. It's amazing that the Bible tells us that we need to understand how brief our time here in our lives. Now, what can I say? What do I remind myself every day? Because every moment counts. What do I share with others about making time? I have three points for us, very simple points, points that maybe you could consider. Number one, 
Use your time wisely because each day may be your last. Pastor Peter reminds us of this many times. Use your time wisely because each day may be your last. Isn't that true? We don't know. Many of our friends who have gone didn't realize that this may have been their last day. So friends, let us ponder on that carefully. You see, in Proverbs 27, verse 1, it says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Let's not always be concerned about tomorrow. Because what is important is today. Today that we can actually be an inspiration for someone. An inspiration to our families. We can share the gospel to many. That's today, not tomorrow. Another passage that you and I must consider is Colossians chapter 4, 5 to 6. It says, live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Wow. Live wisely among those who are not believers. We are here to impact them. Each and every one of us, we are to impact the unbelievers. They may be in your offices. They may be in the family. But they must be considered as important to us. Make the time. And our conversation should be such that it is going to be encouraging. It should lift people up. That's what the Bible says. It is amazing that these are the words that tell us so much and we are to just ponder on them. And that's why it's necessary for us to look at the word and how the word speaks to us. Our reflection points are simple. How do I use my time wisely? Number one, do I share Jesus with my family? Members who are not yet believers? Do I make time for them? Do not say, I will try to find time. Make time. Because it may be the last time that you can see them. We have stories about that many times. And you and I should consider the priority of today. Do I take the opportunity each day to share Jesus with my office mates? Oh, there's so many of them out there. Do I share Jesus with my classmates? With my classmates from grade school, from high school, from college. These are the very people that you can connect with. And we have go viral for that. So let's use all of these platforms, all of this process that we can do. And do I go out of my way to tell people who Jesus is in my life? Do I tell them who Jesus is? I pray that you do. For a minute, I'd like you to ponder over this. These are reflection points. A minute. So the first point that I'd like to just emphasize to us is use your time wisely because each day may be your last. The second one is your goal is to please him in all you do. Your goal is to please him in all you do. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 says, so whether you eat or drink, so whatever you do, 
Do it all for the glory of God. So whatever we're doing today, we should think about the glory of God that we are supposed to do so others may see God in whatever it is that you and I behave in a world that's fallen. So it is important for us. Do it all for the glory of God. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11 is another passage. Verse 1, I'm sorry. Verse 1. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus to live in a way that pleases God as we have taught you. You live this way already. And we encourage you to do so even more. Are you pleasing to the Lord? Do you please God? Are you intentional about pleasing God every day? It is important for us to understand that that is crucial because that's what the Bible says. You know, Paul Chappelle says this, placing him first in your life should be your daily goal. The main pursuit in the midst of all other or your other pursuits. So, Place him first. He is number one. He is the one we should focus on on a daily basis. So brothers and sisters, be aware of that. Every morning, you pray to the Lord, Lord, thank you for being there. Thank you that you've given me another day that I may be pleasing to you. And by the end of the day, what do you say to the Lord? Have I been pleasing to you, Lord? Thank you. Thank you. Reflection points for this is this. At this time, what is my goal in life? Am I intentional to please him in all that I do? The second one is at the end of the day, do I ask the Lord if he is pleased with me? We should be aware of this, brothers and sisters, because every day counts. And we are here to please Him. We are here to glorify Him. We have 30 seconds to reflect on these points. Please do so. The third and last one is, make the Lord's priorities yours. Make it personal. His priorities are known. You and I read the Bible every day. And I pray that all of us will see the priorities that God has given us. Proverbs 16 verse 9 says this, We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. There are so many things in our minds that we plan for, and that's okay. That's okay. We should plan for it. But at the same time, realize that God may change that. God may bring you to another way, which is better for us. So Proverbs 69 is a reality for us. And in James chapter 4, 13 to 16, it says, Look here, you who say, Today or tomorrow, we're going to a certain town and we'll stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your plans and all such boasting is evil. My dear friends, I'm not saying that you should not plan. The Bible is not saying that. But don't be obsessed with plans. But what I'm saying also is that you plan ahead because there are priorities that God has given us. And those priorities are important for us. And look at what A.W. Tozer says. As God is exalted to the right place in our lives, a thousand problems 
are sold at once. Wow, that gives me comfort. That gives me comfort. So what are those that we should be considering? What are those priorities in one's life that we should look at? Now, it is important that in CCF that we appreciate these five, five important priorities. Number one is God. He is our focus. He is number one in our lives. The second priority is our wife, our husband, our spouses. They are number two. The third one are our children. Our children, we should give time. We should make time for them. Let us not, not waste time by doing other things other than this. The fourth one is our work. Our work where we are to glorify God so people will know Jesus because of the work that we do. And the last one is our ministries. Brothers and sisters, never, never change the order of all this. It is very important because these are our God. God's priorities in our lives. Look at Matthew 6, verse 33. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. And live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. Oh, I praise God for this passage. It gives me comfort. It gives me joy. What it tells me is God is first. He is first. He is number one in my life. And that's what we should follow. Another passage that I'd like you to consider is Matthew 22, 37 to 40. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Friends, yes, you may tell me, I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, and all my mind. What I have difficulty in is that I should love my neighbor. Wow. Those are two important commandments that God has given us as priorities in our lives. Love God, love your neighbor. Please, don't ever forget that. It is such an amazing, amazing passage of scripture. We end by this. Make the time. Not finding the time. Your priorities are important. There are many of you here in different lines of businesses. Different disciplines. Those are your priorities. That's why that is the fifth priority. Work. Give glory to God in those work. Do not ever forget that because it is important. You have a role to play. God has given you a talent. God has given you abilities. Use them to give God the glory, to give God the glory alone. That is a wonderful, wonderful reflection for all of us. So let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for how you have orchestrated our prayer time together. It is so important for us to be reminded that truly your word speaks to us as you remind us that you are Lord, you are our Savior, the God of our salvation. Lord, you know our cries. Each one of us crying out day and night because there are many things that are going on in our lives, in our families, in our, with our friends. Forgive us when we have let you down. Many times we have taken you for granted. But thank you for your forgiveness and your love for each one of us. Let our prayers come before you. And please, please listen to our cries. We ask that you keep us in good health. Preserve us as not to be infected by the COVID virus. But we plead to you that this pandemic will also be over for the whole world to learn valuable lessons. We pray for those loved ones, many of them we know, 
Many of them are in, uh, in hospitals, in isolation. Lord, I pray that you truly will be their Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And thank you, Lord, that we can count on you because you are our priority. We ask that those who are sick will always, always be healed, whether in this world or in the next one, because, dear Father, you have made it such that we are all healed. Thank you, Lord, for this. But we remind ourselves for our country. Second Chronicles 7.14 is a reality for us. And my people who are called by my name, humble, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Father, teach us your ways. Make those days count for us. Let us walk in your truth and we will follow you until the end of age. We follow your command to love God above all else and we are to love one another. And we cast all our anxieties on you because you care for us. We rejoice in knowing you and we will point people to your son, Jesus Christ, because there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Praise God for all of you. See you again next week. Ooh, thank you so much, Pastor Vic, for that heartfelt devotion, reminding us on how to use our time wisely. I love what Pastor Vic mentioned, to live each day as if it is our last day. So continue to please the Lord and reach out to your loved ones for Christ. So truly God's word is brings us so much comfort, hope, and encouragement that we can trust and cling on to God. So finally, you can now type your prayer request in our chat box so we can pray for you. We will also show some prayer guides as you intercede for our country, for our church, for our leaders, for our families, and healing for some of our CISA family members. Let us now take this time to commune with God and lift up our prayer concerns to the Lord.
As I read your prayer request, my heart aches over the things that you're going through this pandemic. Healing from those who are contaminated with the virus, protection from COVID, virus sickness, financial provisions, salvation of your loved ones, and your, your sense of urgency to simply share the gospel, unemployment, and spiritual strength and comfort for those who have lost their loved ones. But, but we know that we have a God who always surround us with his love, protection, and never failing comfort in whatever our situation is. And, and just to encourage you, the greatest blessing of a prayer is not receiving an answered prayer, but rather how surrendered we are to the will of God. So never stop praying with a surrendered heart. As we now close, may I call on Pastor Wilson to close us in prayer. Shall we come before the presence of the Lord? Heavenly Father, as one big family, we humbly come before your presence. We thank you for the hundreds of prayer warriors gathering together in this prayer meeting to pray. Indeed, Heavenly Father, you are a great, loving, merciful, and gracious God. You are the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God who heals. In this pandemic time, indeed, really, Father God, we need your healing touch upon the Sisia family and even our friends, loved ones, relatives, and family. Father God, may the blood of Jesus Christ and the healing touch of Jesus Christ hovers each one of us. Lord, we especially uplift those who are sick with COVID or recovering from COVID into your loving hands, Lord. Lord, embrace them now and touch them with your healing touch. We especially pray for Pastor Irwin, Pastor Ricky, the Judy Atienza family, Jay and Ellen Lopez, Brian Alves, our Elevate Missionaries, Derek Dulay, Overseer of CCF Dagupan, Pastor Ariel of CCF Kainta, Sister Mitch, and even the others who are not mentioned, and you know them, Lord. Lord, may they now feel that you are there with them, you strengthen them, you heal them, and make them stronger. And Lord, we pray also for those who lost their loved ones who are grieving, Lord, in our Sisya family and the others, Lord. Lord, you are the God of comfort. You are there beside them. You yourself have passed through them. You yourself is grieved, Lord. Of what's happening. You care for us. You are compassionate for us. So Father God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Minister to us now Lord. And Lord there are others Lord. Who are sick with other illness. Some cancer. Some tumor. Some prostate problem. And, and all the others Lord. You are our healer. Come before your presence. Praying for each of us, we we feel the pain, we feel the difficulties, hardship of each of us, Lord, in this critical time. But Lord, thank you again for being with us. And Father God, thank you that in spite of all these problems, we still continue to do your ministry, to fulfill the Great Commission, 
We thank you for the more than 1,000 participants last week on GoViral Phase 1 training, Lord. Though there are some network, computer, or Zoom glitches, Lord, but we are able, Lord, to be trained. And we pray for this Saturday, tomorrow, that everything will be smooth, Lord. Lord, bind the works of Satan that he'll not able to hinder or cause any problems in our training. And you hem us with your Holy Spirit and your holy angels. So that all of us, Lord, who are trained, Lord, will really share the gospel and disciple people, Lord. We even pray for the ongoing phase two training. That, Lord, in the pastoral area and the satellite churches, those who are able to finish the phase one assignment of establishing five new believers at least will be in the phase two, Lord. Lord, we even pray, Lord, for the other trainings, the MC squad, go by all around the world, Lord. Lord, we pray for tonight, Lord, as there will be an MC square training in Guangzhou, China, Lord. We pray, Lord, for these Chinese leaders who will train that they will bring out a spiritual movement in Guangdong, Lord. And Father God, we thank you, Lord, for how you are working in CCF and those churches that belong to you because you want us to be light and soul of the world. And Lord, for the other concerns of our country, for even internationally, there are so many wars and rumors of wars, problems, calamities. Father God, may you minister to them and may they know the Prince of Peace and may they have Christ in their lives. Lord, send people to bring the gospel to them, to bring the good news, to bring peace and hope to them. So Lord, use us, Lord, in a crisis, their opportunity to minister to people. Lord, may all of us prayer warriors that after we pray, Lord, Lord, you will cause us to move and to minister, to love, to pray, care, share with others. Thank you for this time of prayer. Continue to give us a heart of prayer because prayer is of the ministry and you want to be the prayer ministry and all other ministries that you have entrusted to us so that we can see the great commission fulfilled in us and in our church. Thank you. This we pray in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ and everyone says amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Wilson, for interceding for us. We still have a few minutes left, and we are encouraging everyone to continue praying. You can still stay in our Zoom prayer room until 1.15 this afternoon. So you can continue sharing your, your prayer request in the chat box so we could pray for you. Uh, just a few announcements. This coming Sunday... It's a very exciting one. We will continue our series on No Regrets, Living a Fulfilled Life. So do not miss this coming Sunday's message of my disciple, Pastor Jovi Soriano, who will share God's word about no regret about money. No? So at 9 a.m. and 12 noon and Pastor Bong in the afternoon, 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. So invite your loved ones, family, relatives, and friends, and I'm certain that they will be blessed. Okay? Mm -hmm. We also encourage every one of you to join in our community Viber, Telegram, and Facebook group where important announcements and updates are being shared in our community group daily. Okay? And of course, uh, we encourage everyone to continue sharing your prayer requests, any, un uh, uh, any answered prayers and testimonies on the email shown in our screen. I think this is all for our announcement. We will see you again next Friday, same time for our weekly prayer intercede. Have Amen. a blessed and restful weekend, everyone. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Bye, everyone. God bless each of you. Bye. Amen. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Thank you.